Okay, sounds great. Yeah. Um, you now you're talking about Kansas City, like because they're strict there, right? They're strict, but uh, for example, if we have a, a detail, for example, you end up not using it, they're not going to get after it. It's like, well, how come you didn't use this one? Or, or you made modifications, minor modifications. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, as, as long as it's uh, industry construction practices, you should be fine. Now, they'll get after you if you if we call out, for example, like a 2 by 8 joist, but you use 2 by 6s the Of course, that's less than the design or less than what the drawings call out, they'll get after you on that. Right. Um, electrical work, uh, they, they have their own codes on that. Uh, you know, just as long as you follow the code. You know, one time we did th training through Kansas City, Missouri to be third party inspectors. And one guy from the city said, really, you can build a house without any drawings or structural design, as long as you follow the code to the, to the tooth, you know, uh, you can build it. It's just when you deviate from it. Now, the only thing that you require structural design is foundations because it changes uh, based on soil conditions. And if you have like steel beams and columns, things like that, that's when you get into uh, some, some issues. Right. But overall, like for example, the IRC has uh, tables for floor joist spacing, you know, uh, things like that. Right, so, but, uh, the thing is, uh, I, I do understand it, but so you think a lot of ours just follows a lot of the standards? It's You don't think it's particularly custom because because the thing was i mean a lot of the details are custom we're just not doing things the way they they're normally yeah. done no we'll, we'll pick up most of those comments that you have uh they're going to be looking for more more than anything else probably calculations make sure that uh, that we uh, picked up the special at carport i think they're gonna probably have most comments on that more than anything else um but everything else i think um it's pretty straightforward we can go through down or through the list Okay. Make sure so, that we yeah, this I, I put it all into one document. So let me um, can I share my screen with you? And, and go ahead. Yes. Yes. All right. So let's share the screen here. Um. So take a look at. Let's see. You've got some here. I'm going to share this document with you explicitly again. I just sent it okay. to you so you can take a look. But here, can you see my screen now? Or Yes, yes. Okay, okay. so here we go. Working list. Um, so, idea there was, um, let me maybe... Be a little bigger. Um, so, individual modules, like, calling out details like, for example, the you know the inspector comes in there and he sees that while you shared with us things like like this one here that's standard, but we're building it in four by four by nines. So I just want to make sure that he has details like that. But I mean, you think it's not necessary? Like, okay, if we tell him, okay, we're doing, we're telling, oh, we're kind of following this, but then in actuality we get a module like this. Is he gonna care? Like, this is our actual, right? Like. So we're, the the so, being like we've got breaks at every four feet, so you got to bind the two modules next to each other, and that's some of the details I think that are critical for calling out, right or no? Yeah, but yeah, well, connect connect them together. Yeah, we we need to call that out. Yeah. Um, uh, but, so yeah, we will we'll call something out on that. But I sometimes with the city, uh, less is more, <laughs> if if that makes sense. So, like this detail I send you here in the lower right hand corner, yeah. I would not put that on the drawings. I would not go that far uh, because if it's on the drawing, you need to follow it, okay? Because you're saying, I'm going to deviate from the IRC and I'm going to uh -huh. uh, do it this way. So, and there's many ways to do framing, many, many ways. But if you are telling the, the city, I'm going to do it this way and this is the only way I'm going to do it, then they're going to get after you. It's like, well, how come you didn't follow your own instructions? Ah, okay. So, so I would not put too many details on the drawings okay. uh, or specific details because they're going to go out there and they say, okay, the engineer approved it. Now, nothing, I don't think there's a project that I worked on in all my years where the city approves it right away. Uh, they are going to have some comments, but I would just start out with, you know, what, here's, here's the house. We will provide more information than, than your typical house because this is a custom-made house, but... I would not go above and beyond okay. any of that stuff. Yeah, just okay. just make it because you guys you guys know what you're going to build it and how you're going to build it. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. basically it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, so for example, on point number one, are we going to give them, well, this is how we build all of our modules typically, or no, just leave it out? I wouldn't, not at this stage. Okay. If, if they ask for more information, we can, uh, I can go back to you. It's like, okay, let's, uh, let's provide them with the, this is going to be the module, but I don't think we need to. Uh, we'll just have to show them that we're connected because my calculation is going to show that the studs are spaced at, uh, what is it? Uh, 16. Still 16 inches on center. It's a standard industry practice. Uh, nothing unusual about that. Um, if anything, it's going to be stronger than... Right, exactly. Um, because yeah, because we have... Uh, between each module, we've got the double studs. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll uh, we'll call out. Now, th this this module is going to be coming from the factory. It has is going to have insulation in it. Is that right? No, no. So okay. we're going to build this on site. Okay. Okay. So, so we can add. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, call out how these modules are going to be connected together. Yeah. Um, no, we have to yeah. follow the standard process. They don't allow you to put insulation until after rough in, so we can't put insulation at this stage. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. All right, point two. So I noticed in the detail that you called out here, uh, you've got the interior, which looks thicker than 3 eighths, and the exterior, I don't really see a, let's see, let me maybe zoom in on that one. Uh, I don't think I see uh, anything for the exterior sheathing there. Uh, and the interior sheathing looks too thick. There's something to point out, because. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I put a comment there. OSB appears to be missing on the outside, and the interior appears to be thicker than three eighths beadboard, which we're using. Okay. So this is in a document. Um, you know, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they will not. Uh, I don't think the city will, will look that closely on the detail. Oh. This is more for the foundation. Um, okay. Yeah, as long as long as you call out the numbers uh, or, or what the foundation is, we'll call out for you know like two by six wall. That's all they're gonna look all for. Right. They, they won't look for if we call out because uh, in our notes, our general notes, we call out for the type of sheathing that's gonna be on okay. the. So cool. that that covers it there. Okay, um, sounds good. So in uh, in this three point three, we don't have any of the intersection plan or step elevation. So maybe you can just take that out. It also looks like LD is not defined, so I'm not sure where the dimension is. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take that out. That's no okay. problem. Yep. Uh, so yeah, clean that up. Okay, so here here's that big thing. Now, you said we should probably try to, this would be okay, but you're saying, well, this would be harder. Well, the, if we auger this, we can actually get in there and remount the bottom to make it 28 on the bottom, just like exactly shown. So from the build perspective, it's easy to auger at 22 inch. So this would be acceptable, you're saying? This is acceptable. What, what we look for and what the city is going to look for in our calculations is what we call the bearing uh, of the footing. So when you have a, a load, um, you have to have a certain square footage of concrete to resist the, the soil. Well, the soil has to resist so much square footage. So, for example, let's say uh, you have enough load that uh, you want like a two foot by two foot footing because based on soil conditions. All right. Um, if you go more than two foot by two foot, that's, yeah, that's better, uh, but you don't go less. So, in, in this case, I, I think, I don't know what kind of auger you have, but. Uh, if you want to do it this way, as long as that the 28 dimension is the meets our minimum requirements, we should be okay. So, for example, if I come up with a uh, pier size that it's uh, 22 inch, for example, and we we use this detail of the 28 inch, or, or in the field you make it bigger, that's fine. The seed's not going to care. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, can so, we can we then go down to like the minimum where a person can fit down there to dig, which is like 18 inches? Yeah, I think uh, when I did the revised calculations, I have to look back on my notes. I marked them up on my... Because um, that would be ideal. That means we're save, saving a lot on concrete. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it can be just a, a, a 22 inch. Here, one second. Let, let me pull up the, my file. All right.
So when I did the, the finalized calculations, mm -hmm. uh, the big center pier, yeah. um, that I came up with a minimum pier diameter for bearing has to be 22 inches. The rest of the piers, they can be 16 inches. Oh. So that, that's a big reduction in pier sizes. Oh, OK. OK. Uh, for what are you assuming for soil, 1,500 PSI? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Well, that already solves our question, then. So to, to have what we call the Sabel bottom pier, you don't have to have it. But because what they have is uh, this auger that is just uh, straight up and down. They just come in and uh, drill it. A 22 inch or 16 inch and uh, it'll be straight up and down the round pier from bottom to the top yeah yeah so there, there's no need to now if you want to go above and beyond as long as your bottom portion is a minimum 22 inches uh that, that's okay with us but you don't need to have this yeah again we, we call this bell bottom the pier you don't have to have it okay what would you suggest putting in a plans can you because, for example, with a 22 inch, we can still, like, if we want to save on concrete, save even more on concrete, we can go with 18 and remount on the bottom. What's, um, what would you recommend? Because, because, um, I could look at the numbers, but it's probably like you save like 50 or 100 bucks or something. Well, maybe not even that much, but. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to look at labor, you have to look at the equipment, uh, what's it going to cost you to so, get this shape? Well, may maybe let me ask you this question, let me reframe it then. So if you specify 16 and 22, and then the inspector shows up and we've got six, uh, 16 with a 22 bell bottom, is he going to okay that? Yeah. yeah they're, they're look you at, just, they're look can at the... you make a call out? A simple call out so so do it straight and then make a call out okay to make it make the 22 inch pier 22 inches only at the bottom x inches okay yeah i, I guess you're doing the bell bottom just to save on concrete material yeah yeah or for example like if we run right yeah yeah it's, it's just to save save money on a concrete material okay uh, yeah, it's we... actually, now that it's only 22 inch, that's actually not saving much. Maybe it's not even worth it. But, but, you, but if, you've, if you can, please add that note to give us the flexibility if we want to do that. Okay. Because the ideal situation, therefore, becomes we get a 16 inch auger to the site, and we only need one auger and a 22 inch. That, see, that's the other part. We don't have to switch augers, which, you know. Which is just a little bit of time, but we we auger with 16 inch, and then we just get in there and just ream out uh, the six inches bell bottom, which is pretty easy to do. It's just three inches off each side. Because how how would they uh, drill it at the bottom? Because all that soil. Well, no, um, we're we're drilling with 16. If that's the requirement, if, if the 22 require for the okay for the 22 inch requirement, we're drilling down with 16. And one just steps down there with a shovel and reams out the bottom just with a shovel. Oh wow! Is that all right? I think you're gonna spend more money on labor then, but I, I just don't know. Yeah, that's up to you. I mean, it's all right. Does it's it all right. Us, does it hurt us to say, okay, the plans call for 22 inches? You can make a note there saying only the x inches at the bottom have to be 22 inches can you just call something like that out and that would solve yeah we'll, cases? We'll, we'll, we'll call something out yeah yeah that would solve all cases and you can keep it simple and if you want to if you feel like saving con i mean it would make a difference if someone's making mixing their own concrete on site the difference between 16 and 22 would be significant if one is not bringing a truck in so that's that's why we would like it Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So here, getting into question five. 
gravel on the roof detail. So, so you got my message on that, right? Basically ballasted roof and therefore we need the two by 12s to make that yeah. happen. Now the, the ballast was there primarily for UV. So I'm thinking like under the panel, just put it like as little as we need. And then in between the panels, put like 1.5 inches. Okay. Um, can you put that into the details? Uh, yeah, we we can we can. Uh, well, or do they not? Maybe the. I mean, do we have to even put it in? Like, we don't have to detail it. No. Maybe you can call it out as okay. Ballast of X inches is allowed because that would that would allow us to make sure that the inspector knows that we're not overloading the roof. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put. Uh, you said an inch and a half of gravel. Yeah. Okay. I will put something in the drawing that uh, roof design is uh, is designed for inch and a half of gravel. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Next. Um, oh yeah. So that's cool. Keep it at two by eights as long as we're covered for by writing in two by twelves for those headers. Yeah. I'm, um, yeah that's cool. They they will not care. Again, we're we're going up in size. They're not going to care. Okay. That's good. Uh, so. I mean, they're, so they're not going to care typically when you're going up in size, but of course they would care if you're going down in size, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're covered on that. Um, okay, second floor, Frank. Okay, so you're recommending the 2 by 6 headers on the non-load bearing wall. So you've seen that kind of stuff shift around? Yeah, when wind blows on this thing, it, it might uh, shift a little bit. Okay. Not, not a whole lot. Uh, I mean, it doesn't happen too often, but... If this was my house, I would put it. Okay. Um, uh, that's cool. I mean, we can definitely put in those extra measures. It, it helps because, yeah. because like, uh, like this detail that you that I send you yeah. doesn't have a header over the door. But we do lots of home inspections here in town. I mean, thousands uh, a year, and we see all kinds of thing. We see all kinds of things, and uh, so sometimes uh, oh. you get like hairline cracks above the, these weak spots. So uh -huh. it just uh, stiffens it up. Yeah. Really. And that's also like so. This so the um, advanced framing may not be as applicable here. Is that given because typically, like the Midwest has higher wind loads, um, or that's you would I don't recommend think, it no. anywhere? I, I would recommend it anywhere, really, because yeah. uh, you get higher wind loads when you go down to the to the coast. Really, yeah. Um, I mean, even in Texas and all the way up to the. All, all, all the United States is about the same wind speed. Okay. It's just that the coast is going to get so much uh, higher wind loads. Okay. Okay. So, no and then also, there's going to be some settlement going on over here because it's a uh, new building on uh, soil. And mm -hmm. with settlement, you get some cracks. So it just minimizes things. That's oh. all. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So this kind of goes back corner modules detail. What we need is a nailing schedule between the modules, but you said less is more. Yeah, we, we, we can update uh, the corners. I was going to put a detail for the corner and also for the intersection between like the the, um, the carport and the house. There's also an intersection there. So we, we can show some details uh, over there, uh, how it's framed and uh, call okay. it some nailing pattern. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so let's, solve, let's nail this one right now because this is uh, <laughs> way out of control here. So what do we do here? What can we do? I mean, we know what the rules say. I mean, we the, the, we want to stick to the 4x8 modules simply because we've got a big swarm of people making all of those in like a couple of hours, and then we just install everything on top. I mean, we, we could like tilt it up, but that's that, that like completely breaks our the kind of workflow we have. So what can we eliminate here? Like, what can we do? Um... I mean, you have like four studs on each side of the opening. You you don't need that much, really. You just need like one. Again, you have to play with the dimensions. Okay, so but the first question is, do we need two of those jack studs? Like, do we need two of them here? No. No, I don't think so. Let me check. That's what we need, and we'll just do it. Because this was like we're trying to go by the regular code, and yeah, no, I, I don't think I don't think you need that two jack studs. Typically, not. Um, 
I, I would, yeah, I would eliminate one of the Jack studs. Okay. And then the, the King studs, well, that's what, that is a different panel. See, the King uh, studs now, what do we do there? Because that's still... We can... And even if you didn't draw this in, can we just shift the windows over so that that way one of the side studs on the window that's covered by the jack stud it's so, so we can eliminate one of those still i'm not sure okay katarina wants to Hi. pump Hello. in how are you? Sorry, I was listening to this. I have. Um, I'm about to start a, a Pilates class, but I just wanted to chime in. So I guess that uh, um, based on the code, like our building is 16 feet wide, and the code has provisions on the table for 12 and 20. So it wasn't clear to me whether we needed one jack stud or two because we're in between. Um, and then the other question was if we. Well, if we need only one, can you replace it? Well, the code says that we can replace it with header hangers. But oh, yeah. my other question is like, even if we need two, can we replace one of them with a header hanger? So we take, we get rid of each pair. I have to go. Okay, so, so yes, yeah. so that's what Katarina wanted to say. But, but I think we, we look look at my notes. I have those yeah, more specific. We'll do it. Okay. Um, yeah, but so I th so we have to look into that. And so the other thing is like header hangers too. That's another option there. Header hangers, yeah. Um, okay, I see. Like they have joist hangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if the code says we can do it, then well, I don't see why we can't. Right. I mean. Uh, oh yeah. So Katarina is saying, if one jack stud is required, then it can be replaced with a header hanger. So the question becomes, can we go with one jack stud? I, I think one jack stud is enough. One jack stud and one header hanger to make up for a pair. Mm -hmm. And Katarina says also, if we, um, if we do need to, can we replace one with a header hanger? Yeah, with my experience, only one jack stud is needed unless the header is a large span. And it's not about the, the jack stud, it's uh, how much bearing we need to have on each end. So sometimes if you have a, a 12 foot span, uh, you want more bearing underneath each, each end because you want to try to prevent the rotation when the beam starts to flexion. Yeah. So you want more bearing on each side. That's why sometimes we specify two uh, jack studs. But for a, a window, something like this, I think one is more than enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, we can eliminate the, those uh, interior jack studs. So that, that takes out like four studs right there by yeah. itself. That's much better. Yeah. Uh, you just have to look at the window opening and the window sizes, make sure that everything is it fits. But you can always frame that up uh, as, mm -hmm. as you see fit. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I would take yeah, I would take those four studs out, those jack studs. Anywhere you have double, just take one out. All right. Yeah. yeah. Again, we won't show this in our drawings. It's just the standard uh, practices. Um, the city will not will not worry about that. They'll not. They're not gonna give you a hard time on it. Uh huh. Um, what do they do? Well, they, they'll just make sure that you have jack studs. So uh, now, if we call out two jack studs. And uh, we show that on the drawings, and then you have one. They're gonna say, "Oh, yeah. why did you, why did you deviate from the drawings?" But uh, again, the, I think the code requires just only one jack stud. I will double check with the codes, but I don't think uh, I haven't seen more than one, unless again, uh, if it's like a long span. Yeah, because uh, it was uh, Katarina was saying something about if it's if the span. The, she was implying what I understand from Katarina. She was saying about the if the building span, which ours is sixteen, so the width of the building. Oh wait, but she's saying that's that's not the critical dimension. The, the dimension is the racking and the plane that we're working with right now. Uh, she, Katarina was implying that the width of the building 
In other words, what's what lays on top of this, which is the joists, the second floor joists. Uh, the code specifies for 12 and 20 feet, but it didn't specify for our value of 16. So we were wondering, like, do we need to go up or not? That was the qu outstanding question, but. Um, so for 20 foot, they're saying you have to have two jack studs? Yeah, that's what Katarina was picking out in the code. If the building is 20 feet wide, you would need two jack studs. Okay, I'll, I'll check on that. Yes, maybe check on that. And um, Do you think in that case, like, so you can check and give us an answer, but if you give us an answer that's one stud required, uh, then we should probably call that out as just one is required? Or uh, if you want to do card, I would not call it anything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it just if you deviate a little bit from uh, what's required. Do they um? Do the can an inspector go? Well, that detail is not in your drawings. You actually have to go to two. Can they do that or no? So they're gonna follow the code, right? <laughs> They're there to implement the code. So let's say, okay. yeah, for, for like a 20 foot wide building, you do need the two jack studs. And they go there and you only have one. Even though we don't show the drawings, they're going to say, you yeah. do not follow the code, you need to add more jack studs. Okay. That, that, that's where they come in. All right. Now, if it's something uh, specific where we call out on our drawings, let's say for a 12 foot wide building, we call out the two jack studs, but you only installed one. They're going to say, OK, you meet code, but you do not meet the drawings where the engineer signed on it. What's going on here? OK. All right, well, let's find out the detail on this and put whatever we need. So hopefully, we, we can address this crazy question. OK. okay. Uh, next one. So in um, headers on the interior walls, you, you call out headers on interior walls. Now, those walls aren't supposed to be load bearing on the interior. Uh, or are they? Or what's going on there? I, again, I think this is my personal preference. You don't have to have them um, if you don't want. To, if you don't want to, um, just because of settlement and shifting, I just stiffens that the opening up. But we can take them out. I, I have no problem taking them out. Again, they're they're non-structural. Um, it just provides more stiffness around the opening. It produces cracks in the sheet rock later on. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to have them. Okay. And from a structural perspective, we don't have to have them. Okay, let's let's not let's take them out. Okay. Okay, let's take those out. Okay, nailing schedules is yeah. You you sent us a, a general generic schedule for just about everything, but maybe can we do it in a way that in what you send us you actually specify only the things that we use because you specified a lot of stuff that we're not going to use. So this was like the critical dimensions I was looking for, exterior sheathing, interior sheathing, individual interior 2x6 modules. Like for example, for the 2x6 modules, if we're building them out, like can they go check, oh, do we have like two or three nails per stud? Like stuff like that or? Um, um, you know, what I would do is probably be specific on the module to module connection. The, the rest, um, we have the faster schedule on sheet S43. Mm -hmm. And it's probably more than what you need, but this is just a standard table from the IRC. Um, some engineers don't even put that table on the drawing because somewhere in the notes says follow this table. We just put it there just that, that way the contractor has easy access to it and still yeah. work with them. Uh, how about the bolts? for the decorative trellis and a carport ledger. That you have to call out, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to call that out. Uh, for, for joist hangers, hangers, do you call that out or do you just say use standard joist hangers? I, I think you have to specify the joist hangers, right? Uh, <laughs> sometimes, I, in most cases, I don't. Oh. And I haven't had any pushback from the city um, on that. Now, if, if you have a 2x12 and you use a joist hanger that is good for a 2x4, 2x6, they don't call you out on it. Uh, yeah. We can certainly call it out if you want us to. I have no problem with that. Yeah. It's just, just, just um, I just typically do it. So I'll, I'll, we'll call it out. Call it out. Um, 
subfloor, carport deck, and OSB nailing schedule. I think you mentioned that we'll probably cover. Um, yeah, and the critical thing, module to module connection. Uh, somewhere yeah, that, that's critical. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, so look at detail 12. There's a detail, I'm not, I'm not sure if we have to call this, call this out explicitly, but when you have the floor joists for the second floor, there's this covering piece, and those blocks there, they're, they're pretty much for what we're going to put on there, but do you have to call this out, like how we actually do this blocking there? Because it's not really structural, it's to close up no. the gap. No. Okay. You have to call it out. No. So you, I would rather not do that? Too. I would rather call it out, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if the city... Let's say the city goes out there and says, what's going on here? Is it approved by the engineer? I can always write a letter and uh, say it's, it's approved. But no, I'm not worried about it. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, what about details of things like dub double door, carport door? Is that going to be called out explicitly or do we just say, well, you we have some of that? There already, but do you, what do you mean, uh, double well, door? Well, actually, would there be as an individual detail showing here's how we do the double door and then it's framing? Or you said, like, less is more? This is like, you mean at the front entrance? Yeah. The, the front, front entrance, of the house? Yeah. No, we, we don't do that. This is more architectural detail, not structural. Uh, we, don't, we don't get into that at all. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where it's just a standard construction practices. Okay. Uh, they'll, they'll come in and make sure that it's it's framed right, but we don't we don't do framing details on it. Okay. You know, I, I think what you have is just fine okay. the way the way you're approaching it. Okay. Uh, roof profile detail. Do you do you need that? You've got um, you've got some beds. Do you need any more detail on that? Uh, I think in our details we show some, uh, yeah, we, we show a couple profiles. On S11, we show like a section through the building. Um, Slide 11 section, uh -huh. that's sufficient? I think so. Okay, that's, uh, that's we're good. Okay, I just had a question on this architectural notes. Uh, oh yeah, when you say, um, type 1 felt weather barrier is standard house wrap okay? Like regular, what, what are you calling out felt in particular type 1 felt specifically? Yeah, I, th I think if you want to do something else, we, we can call out. Oh, what were you planning on using? Well, just like the regular, um, you know, house, if you Google house wrap, this kind of stuff, you know, um, you know, like the Tyvek or whatever, like that kind yeah. of stuff. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, just standard house wrap. Make sure that... Um, what's type 1 felt? D226 type 1 felt? Um, oof, what is that? Oh, yeah. That stuff. Felt under layman. No, we're, we weren't doing it. We're, we're just doing uh, just doing house wrap. So you can change I'll, I'll that. Yeah. I'll keep it to type like a recall. Okay. Next, um, oh, here, you're working on, um, in your builder's plans, disclaimer, you said that the scope of the, your drawings is restricted. How, how is it restricted? Like, what's, what's missing? Is there anything we should be worried about? No, no, no. Okay. No, nothing there. Um, you, you're just saying, and by, by that you mean that you're not spelling out every single detail, you're just talking to us about the general details, right? Correct, yeah, and basically this is a uh, attorney jumbo uh -huh. mumbo that <laughs> we need to put in our drawings. Okay. <laughs> else. Um, yeah. Now, carport modules, now those were pretty tall, like they were like the 14 footers or so. Do we need some um, detail for that to specify? Because that's, I mean, typical stuff is like, you know, 8 or 9 feet or 10. Here we're 14. Do you need another detail on there? So it, it is a 14-foot, but uh, there is uh, joists over there that are uh, going to cut that uh, um, yeah. that span. Yeah. So that, that will help uh, with that unbraced length. Oh, okay. 
the, the only thing that we are looking at is uh, each side of the carport, the entrance. Um, I'm not sure if the city is going to make us put a uh, what we call a pole frame. And we had that on our sheet. Uh, let's see which on sheet S42. This is a standard uh, carport. Yeah. This is a standard, uh, what we call a pole frame. So, um, an opening around a garage is very weak because you don't have much uh, shear resistance in the in the walls on each side of the opening. Okay, oh. so so per code you have to have that for garages. Now, carports. I'm not sure if the city is going to come back and make us do something similar. Now, this is a standard IRC detail that we just put in our drawing. Right. We don't have that. In, in our uh, building, so it has to be probably designed uh, specifically. Um, I honestly, I'm not too worried about the, the racking and back and forth. I think this thing is braced very well. Uh, we have enough braces in the joists and the diaphragms and the, and the walls. Um, what we could do, if, if you want, uh, eliminate that detail completely uh, and then just see what the city says. I, I don't think it's going to gonna have any... It's, we're not talking about big opening or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I would just take it out completely and just uh, see what the city says. They might come back and they say, you need some additional details on that. that that's, that's my recommendation. Okay. Because, because it's, it's, it can get very complicated. Not design-wise, but construction-wise, it can get complicated because we have to tie this back down to the piers somehow. Because this thing is gonna go go like this back and forth. Now you have the house to resist it on one side, right? So it's, it's gonna lean this way and that way around the opening. Mm -hmm. um, if it leans into the house, it's not gonna matter. You have that resistance over there. Yeah. Um, pulling away from the house, we'll just have to maybe put extra extra nailing over there um, to to make sure that it doesn't pull out from the house. And I, I think from a structural perspective, that's all you need. Okay. So uh, let, let me work on this uh, and, and get these details out and uh, okay. write some some notes about how to nail these two all together. Okay. So, yeah. Sounds good. <clears throat> all right. Um, moving on. Uh, roof detail. Uh, like the specifics of the, the water drip details, gutter and all that, do you need more work on that? No. Okay. No. no from a structural perspective, no. Okay. Um, side cross section, you kind of have that. Uh, we'll leave that one. Okay. For the mass anchors, the mudsill anchors, every four feet, can we go, because uh, I heard somewhere it's every six feet is the actual requirement. Can we go two, four feet, four feet, and then skip one? And then skip one module and then go like that? So that on average you've got two per 12 feet? I would put them at every modular. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's not the cost is very minimum, but uh, yeah, I yeah. think the city will like that uh, because they're, they're going to be modular. It's just that the connection will be much stronger that way. Okay. Leave it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Question on the interior wall under the stairway. That is the. What is, where is that? That's um, standard slab detail S40. How do we attach the sill plate to the concrete? Is that ram set or how do we do it? Yeah, they have those uh, nails that go through concrete. Uh, it's not just a basement wall. Do you uh, specify that or? Just use standard ram set nails. Uh, we, we, we can we can put something. Okay. So yeah, if you can specify ram set, because we've been doing that. Ram set nail specs. Yeah, maybe, maybe that new uh, fastener schedule has something on there. I'll I'll check if we have that. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Um. What do you have to show on the stair detail and the landing for the stairs? Do you need anything there? We typically don't show anything as long as you meet the, the code requirements, which is, I think you have to have a three foot or three and a half foot landing. Yeah. yeah which I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem in our case. Yeah. So, 
So we, we should be good, but no, we wouldn't show any details on that. Okay. Uh, regarding the cross section of the insulation on the roof with the rigid insulation and the fiberglass, do you need to s specify that or put some more no. details in there? No. Okay. Um, do you do any trim detail, like you, uh, interior? Or that's that's non-structural stuff? That's non-structural. That's more uh, architectural, or, or you can do it uh, as, as an owner. You can do whatever you want over there. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, Katarina had this question. It's, it's more like for understanding the IRC there. Uh, if we have... Um, does our house classify in, in this kind of a design, like what they show here? Because they have specifics for how to do this kind of a house one clear floor span and one flat roof for the purposes of the IRC can this building be considered consisting of roof ceiling and one clear span floor or does well, that it, that it has a flat roof alter the header sizing because then if it follows this rule that we can pick out more from the, the IRC in terms of how we build this um yeah i don't know i have to look into that i, I just don't know and then I, again I, I think if you deviate from the irc as long as you have an injury is a seal on the drawing you, you should be okay so <clears throat> roof ceiling and one floor so well the question is like if you look at that little uh so so i guess to be more specific if you look at this does the, our house classify as this even though we have a flat roof yeah right or no i don't see why not i don't see why not either because the because the angle on the roof here you know the flat roof um seems to to take care of all the forces that might be in question yeah yeah I, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about that as far as like design and the forces i'm not design i'm not worried about that okay so yeah, it's probably yes here. We'll, we'll probably classify as that. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, next. Wall module details. So, so now this is back again to the, the there's a few questions we have here. Um, and you said not to put in too, too much detail, but here's a couple of, uh, I mean, do you need any of this stuff or this is no no you don't need any of this stuff no i mean this is more of a like a fabrication drawings i would i would okay. categorize this as fabrication drawings the city will not the, the only time they need fabrication drawings is if you have trusses and engineered members but no i'm, I'm not worried about that okay. uh okay. now who knows who's going to come from the city if they want more information we can always send them something like this you know i i, I wouldn't share anything with them right now okay Okay, so here the, um, the question is, note that the header extends beyond the, the RO, what's RO? Rough opening. And the jack stuff is not at the end of the header, is that okay? The jack studs are not at the end of the header. Yeah, um, I don't think that's going to be a problem because it's bearing on... Yeah, it's still bearing, yeah. It's bearing, it's kind of levered out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Should be okay. Again, again, if the city asks questions, I can always uh, come and say, write a letter and say this is acceptable. Okay. Okay. Um, and you prefer, like, not to call these things out in the details and just say, you know, you'll address it if it comes up. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your general principle is like the less is more. Well, when it comes to certain things, not everything, of course, but uh, certain things, yeah. I mean, if it, if, if you put certain things, and let's say you're, for some reason, uh, the, the framers forgot to put something because they don't know drawing, the city is going to catch it and they're going to give you a hard time. But if it's common sense stuff, and the city does have common sense, and uh, if it follows code, makes sense uh, engineering-wise, they're not going to call it out. They're not going to say anything. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I expect comments from the city. I expect comments from the draw on the drawings, and also when they do their inspections, I, I expect okay. that. So that's that's normal a process. Okay. So okay, so um, this is once again going back to that question: How many jack studs do do we need? So 
Um, but I already asked you that question, so move on. Uh, here for the 36 by 60 windows, okay, same question. Let's see. Okay, we addressed this one already. You said you'd recommend it for the headers, yeah. Uh, drawbacks, yeah, drawbacks are more, you know, less structure. Okay, here's the uh, details, no questions. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions. Here's a question. Right, so do we run into any issues with like fire codes or anything with the beadboard, 3 8 inch beaded plywood? Say that again, I'm sorry. Do you run into any issues um, with using 3 8 inch beaded plywood as the interior wall, sh wall siding, this stuff, this kind of stuff here? Oh, for the interior? Yeah. Will this meet fire code? Um, I guess w what fire code are you concerned about or what, what fire issues are you concerned about? There's no separation that's required. This is a single unit or single family unit. Okay. Um, it's anytime you have like a duplex, whether it's vertical duplex or horizontal duplex, that, that's when you need the fire separation. Oh, okay. Um, and even with that, uh, you have to use like a fire rated uh, jib board. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's required. Okay. Or uh, I don't think you have to. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a single family. I don't think it's required. Okay. I um, don't think it's going to be an issue because th this is going to be done after the seed leaves anyway. They they won't they won't call it out even if they see it. I don't think they call it out. People finish their houses in different materials all the time. Uh, but the city inspects. There's a final inspection for for occupancy. They they would call it that. Possibly call it that or no. Like if there's any. How, how, how come you're saying that they don't they don't inspect this? Don't they inspect it in the final inspection? Not always, no. Okay. They, they do a rough inspection to check the framing and the plumbing, electrical, HVAC. Uh, and then, uh, no, typically they don't. No, maybe they'll do it in this case because of its uh, the nature of the house, but uh -huh. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah. All right. Um, I, don't, I don't know why I would, but, okay. you know. Right, so this is a question that came up. I actually checked with the St. Joe people. They're perfectly fine with this because um, what we do is this utility channel for electrical, so we're not drilling through walls. Now, there would be a question of nail plates, but the guy from St. Joe said, no, because uh, you're nailing above and below the wires. There's no nails going in there. But do you have any other comments regarding nail plates for the wires here? Like, do you think that would make it in, in Kansas City? I have no idea. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Okay. If, if anything, Kansas City is more strict than San Joe. So if San Joe tells you you can or you cannot do it, I would uh, follow the same method. Okay. Yeah, it should be fine. The guy was perfectly yeah. fine with it. Um, right. So the IRC does not set a limit to the number of splices on a top plate. Does that mean that four foot top plates, these four foot plates on the top of the, do they count? as a top plate. In other words, are we good with, like, the way we have it here, because this is what we build, we've got this top plate of the module and then the top, another top plate there. That's before. fine. Yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah. 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 So be. sometimes uh, if there's a splice that's very close to each other, uh, they'll put the metal strap across. So you just have to make sure that the, the constru uh, construction crew understands where to put the splices. Right. So you don't, want, you don't want that top splice to be in line with the bottom splice, right. for example. Yeah, we, but that's, that's the biggest thing. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, do, do you need to add any more? You already said no, but we've got like a bigger, more detail here. Do you need any of this? Um, let's see, I thought we had some details on that. You did, but you didn't call out, like here we call out more things. Um, I'm not sure you call out as much as we do here. No, as far as like that EPDM drip edge, no, we don't call it out. But I, I need to call out uh, the. Well, I started working on calling out with the the member sizes and the bolt sizes. Okay. That that I did not uh, do the first time when I sent this to you. Right. Um, so it looks like I mean here here we pretty much have more detail here, like this. But you don't need any of this, do you? No. 
No, no. Well, we're done. That's all the questions I got for now. So we should be yeah. pretty good. No, you, you have enough details to, to, to uh, instructions basically. If you have, you can give the, the your customers and how to build it. Uh -huh. um, from a social perspective, we don't show that many details like like you have. There's more architectural details. Per the, the code and per the city, they, don't, they do not require architectural drawings. They always like to see them, but they don't. It's not a requirement. When it comes to commercial properties, you do need uh, architectural drawings, but residential uh -huh. you don't. When yeah. we submit the package, should we include some of our additional other detail or no? Or are you rather no. just no? It, uh, if, they ask, trouble. if they ask for it, if they ask for it, I would submit what they ask for. Mm. It's like uh, lawyers that always tell you don't, don't provide more <laughs> information when, when they ask, just answer the question. <laughs> okay. and, don't provide additional information. So, I, yeah, I, I would I would just leave it at that. And you know, the, the first time we, we, we submit this, I think we're going to learn uh, things from the city. Um, I'm doing this building uh, renovation in Kansas City, Missouri, and I worked with an architect. He's been doing this uh, for about 35 years. And the city came up with uh, some things that he never heard about. It's like, wow, this, this is all new to me. I've been doing this for 30 years, and they're asking me to do more than usual. Okay. It's just the nature of this job. Uh, so he says, you know, I'll apply this for future jobs. So so the first time around, I think it's it's going to be, uh, we'll have some comments. We'll adjust our drawings. We'll pick things, things up. But uh, then we'll, uh, moving forward, I think, for, for other properties, it'll be, it'll be very easy. Okay. Now. If we wanted to do, so this is the thousand square foot. If we wanted to add a staggered, let me, let me show you maybe. Uh, let's Oh, okay, so if we wanted to do a model, let me share my screen again, that looks like Do you see this one? So, do you see that? Yeah, yeah. That's 2,000 square feet. What would it take to get the, the uh, another 1,000 square foot put onto the back of it, like in terms of your effort? Because it's pretty much like no utilities there. It's like pretty much open room on the bottom. And we, we could even do like an open room at the top. And we, we say, OK, 2,000 square feet. Finish it as you like inside, or we can do divider walls upstairs. But it's not too complicated. It's all the complex systems are in the first. Well, you don't even care about like the plumbing and electrical. That's the complex stuff. But uh, if you were to draw up the plans for 2,000, how much more effort would that be? Can you do it like in uh, in the next 500, like you said, 500 bucks for the subsequent uh, blueprints, or would that be much more effort? I think it'd be a little bit more than that. Uh, okay. the, the details probably will be very similar. It's just that the plans, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to update the plan. I mean, it's, it's going to be a new plans, basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK. So, uh, how much time do you think you need at this point to finish up? Um, my director is ready for my comments. I, I talked to her Friday, and but I didn't say anything because we're going to have this call. So uh, I will. Mark up my drawings today and tomorrow morning, and send them to her tomorrow. And then I uh, think by, well, hopefully by Wednesday she'll have them done. It's, it's not really we're many, many comments. We're on time. It's, not, it's not as bad. Uh, we're, we should have those yeah, wrapped up. Okay. So. We're out of schedule then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh. I, 
Yeah, this, the, the last two weeks have just been crazy with the, I took a few days vacation, like almost four days vacation, and then... Yeah, um, I was a little scared of the, uh, for a while, but... I oh, no, 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 you're, you're on my list, you're on my, top of my list, even. So. Okay, very cool. Um, yeah. If you were to do the 2,000 square foot, like, after this project, like, do we have time for December 2nd? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, those models that you gave us will help us a lot because that, that you should create those drawings from the models that you gave us at IFC. Because really, at that point, all you need is um, so you got every detail is the same except different floor plans, and there's like another balcony. There's a balcony on the second edition. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's largely the same. Okay, so let's see if we can. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it's, let's get this one wrapped up and see if we can get to Because if we wanted to do that, then we'd have to have that in, yeah, close to December, cut off, because we'd still have to get it approved by the city. Okay. So it still be like November 15th, absolute cutoff, if we wanted to build that. Okay. Um, but let's see if we can do it. Yes. Yeah. right now, our plan is three sites, but one of them, we would definitely want to do a 2,000 square footer simply because... Uh, People are asking for more space. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And we'll All right. We'll, we'll get uh, going on this. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye.